Here we go. For me, the Joker is the greatest villain ever created. I know, pretty big words, but I think that through the history of movies and comics, I think there never existed a character that was such a perfect nemesis for our protagonist, other than, other than the Joker. He was created by Bill Finger, Bob Kane and Jerry Robinson in the 1940s, but I think that he is one of those characters that evolved over time until they finally became what we all love about them. So let's now talk about uh, Clown Prince of Crime, the Joker. Before analysis I just want to say that I know that there are like 100 alternative versions of the Joker where he doesn't follow our conventional traits of his character, but I will focus just on those versions that, will, that follow rules of his character that I think separate him from other villains in most cases and that make him so unique great villain. And for me the two versions that uh, sum up his character perfectly in short period of time are 1988's The Batman the Killing Joke and 2008's Dark Knight. 30 years, interesting. These two interpretations for me be beautifully shows his motives, personality and his view of the world and his relationship with Batman, although one succeed in this last thing better than the other, I would say. So now I will go uh, through the things that make Joker great and uh, where they appear through the, these two reincarnations. And yes, in Dark Knight Heat Ledger's uh, performance is legendary and he simply brought the soul of the Joker on big screen. And first of all, we must talk about the lack of origin. Okay, this is a classic Joker trait that uh, separates him from um, other comic villains. Uh, this mystery of his origin is simply a genius idea by the writers uh, because we can only speculate uh, what made him this force of chaos. This gives mystery to the care his character and the uh, event that created the Joker must have been so terrible that in our mind it is it created more darkness around him than he already had. What's so interesting to me is uh, at the beginning it seems that both the Killing Joke and the Dark Knight uh, screw this pretty hard. Killing Joke uh, has, obviously the, has obviously that whole black and white uh, segment that I love for many reasons but it simply sh shows Joker origin or so we think. You, you see, this segment shows just one of the potential uh, origins because Joker later states that he uh, sometimes remembers his past one way, sometimes another, and that he prefers to have multiple choices, possibilities, sorry. Uh, Dark Knight does the similar thing, but uh, first, uh, by first telling the whole Why So Serious story, and although it is a great terrifying moment, it screws the whole No Origin Story concept, but uh, later, when he crushes the party, he tells Rachel that he's the, this whole story about his girlfriend, and you realize it is all bullshit, this man really doesn't know his past. These are just one of the potential pasts, so to say. We don't know who Joker was or his origins, all we know that all it took was one bad day. And next is the philosophy about society. And okay, this is a very important thing that I think people other often overlook when they talk about the Joker. Once he was a normal man, one of a man Batman tries to protect, but one day something happened and turned this normal man into a clown prince of crime. And because of this, he tries time and time again to show that society is wrong and how chaos is better than the order, the exact thing that Batman wants to create in Gotham. The, this Joker's behavior is shown in Killing Joke when he tortures, tortures Jim Gordon and time and time again asks how can this uh, like moral, normal man live in a society like this without losing his mind. And uh, also through the whole black and white segment we see the potential Joker's past and we see how the society breaks this man first leading him to crime and then to madness. In Dark Knight uh, this is expressed more through Joker's dialogue, for example when he's trying to break Harvey's moral by telling him this story about a truck full of soldiers and uh, like uh, people's reaction to that. Well, like when truck full of soldiers blows up because it's all part of the plan, but when a Joker kills someone, everybody loses their minds. And because we talk about Harvey now, uh, let's talk uh, about next very important thing about the Joker, and that is that he wants to prove a point. And what point, you may ask? Well, sometimes it is about a society, but he mostly wants to show that every man, even the most normal, moral one, can become like him, murderer or even crazy. This is shown very clearly in uh, Killing Joke when he tortures uh, Jim Gordon with his uh, pictures like of his wounded daughter. Uh, 
Uh, when Barber asks him why he's doing all this, he even states that it is all to prove the point. In Dark Knight, this whole final plan is to make a group of innocent civilians uh, blow up the other boat, because if they don't, they will die. And uh, this plan fails, but he got another trump card, Harvey Dent. He turned Gotham's White Knight into a criminal, and he could almost prove his point that even the most honorable man can fall. Almost, because there is still one Knight of Gotham, and that is the Joker's biggest desire. He wants to make Batman kill. This is what it is all for. All kills, master plans, torture of friends, death of Rachel, paralyzing of bad girl, death of Robin, countless death of civilians. This is what uh, the Joker would die for, like literally. Uh, he wants that uh, the Batman's hate towards him is big enough so he can kill him. He would finally prove his point and he would die, but Batman would too because there can't exist killer Batman. And remember when I said that there is one thing that one adaptation does uh, better than the other? Well, this is it, because Dark Knight totally understands this. For example, with the hit me scene where Joker wants to be killed, uh, or when he laughs when he is falling off the building and Batman like pulls him up and then he is almost disappointed, like almost, because the fun will go on. And, uh, and he then explains uh, their relationship uh, through the story about gravity in immovable object. In short, it states that the, they will go on like this forever because of Batman's moral code not to kill and because Joker won't kill Batman because he's just too much fun. Um, but the King Joke never addresses this clearly, like it seems that Joker is trying to anger Batman but he never states that he wanted Batman to kill him. He even tries to kill Batman, what is like totally against Joker because like the fun is over if Batman dies. Uh, when he is, uh, wants to shoot him with a gun and you can state like that the gun was just a toy but uh, he states that it was loaded. So, like, it is one of these Joker guns with a flag, and yeah, maybe it is toy, but I think it was real gun, but just with this little trick the Joker likes. Then later he just talks about their rela relationship, compar comparing it to two madmen. And although this is a girl, great scene, and although it shows a lot about Joker's character, right, it doesn't show that uh, he wants Batman to kill him, but it shows one other thing pretty well, and that is that he and Batman are the two sides of the same coin. They are order and chaos, good and evil, and they are destined to this forever. Because Batman can't kill, as I said, the, the Joker because of his code, and Joker can't kill Batman because he's just too much fun. And this is shown pretty well through both narratives. All conflict around them, or any other character around them, is not near as great in scale as these two. And the final thing I think every writer who wants who writes a story about the Joker must do is to make Joker smile or enjoy what he's doing, you know, like you can say it like that. Every kill, every point proven, every building destroyed, every Robin tortured, Joker loves it. And he must smile even when he loses because that is just leaves a chance for another smile some other day. This is pretty apparent when he shoots Bar Barbara or when he asks Gordon if he's still sane in Killing Joke, or when he just uh, slides down the hill of money in the Dark Knight, or even in Dark Knight, this famous interrogation scene, like he laughs all the time because uh, he simply loves it. One of the things why Heath Ledger's performance was so great for me be was because he convinced me that Joker enjoyed doing all this stuff. All these little mannerisms, like licking his lips or shaking his head, it really shows even with his philosophy, smart plans. He just loves doing this and it shows that he's mad. And that is about it I wanted to say about the important Joker traits. Like the most important thing always about the Joker is the Batman. Like these two, like there must exist a good Batman. Like that writer must understand the Batman in order to make a good Joker story. Because these two can't exist without each other. And this video really went longer than I wanted, but, but I think that he's a masterpiece of the character alongside the Batman that I really must talk about and I really enjoy doing it. So, till the next time I will probably talk about Unbreakable, I guess, or before the glass, of course, so see you next time, bye.